السلام عليكم ورحمة الله مؤسسات وتحالفات تدعم نضال شعب مضطهد في أرضه وشعوب يعتدى عليها في المنطقة العربية كل يوم ناشطون كرسوا مفهوم التضامن العالمي من كراتشي في باكستان إلى أدنبرا في اسكتلندا من الداخل معكم زينب صفار تابعونا فجر التاسع من أبريل من العام 1948 تاريخ أسود بحق العرب والمسلمين والأحرار في العالم حيث ارتكبت العصابات الصهيونية مذبحة دير ياسين على بعد بضعة كيلومترات من القدس على تل يربط بينها وبين تل أبيب وقت ذاك كانت القدس تتعرض لضربات متلاحقة وكان العرب بزعامة البطل الفلسطيني عبد القادر الحسيني يحرزون الانتصارات في مواقعهم بحسب المراقب لذلك كان الصهاينة في حاجة إلى انتصار فكانت دير ياسين فريسة سهلة لقوات الأرجون وشترن لهي كما أن المنظمات العسكرية الصهيونية كانت في حاجة إلى مطار يخدم سكان القدس الهجوم وعمليات الذبح والإعلان عن المذبحة هي جزء من نمط صهيوني عام يهدف إلى تفريغ فلسطين من سكانها عن طريق الإبادة والطرد تماما على غرار ما تقوم به العصابات المسلحة اليوم كداعش وأخواتها في سوريا والعراق منحين بيجن قال آنذاك المذبحة ليست مبررة فقط لكن لم يكن من الممكن أن توجد دولة إسرائيل من دون النصر في دير ياسين وفي كتابه المعنون الثورة كتب بيجن يقول إن مذبحة دير ياسين أسهمت مع غيرها من المجازر الأخرى في تفريغ البلاد من 650 ألف عربي صابر أبو مريم العضو المؤسس لمنظمة الشعوب الآسيوية للتضامن مع فلسطين والحملة العالمية للعودة إلى فلسطين والمنظم للمسيرة العالمية نحو القدس يحدثنا عن الحملات التضامنية مع القضية الفلسطينية المنطلقة من باكستان إلى آسيا وكيف تمت عملية خلق الوعي في زمن عدم الاكتراث الفعلي بما يحدث في فلسطين المحتلة Sabir Abu Maryam, founder member of the Asian People for Solidarity with Palestine and the Global Campaign to Return to Palestine, and also the organizer of the Global March to Jerusalem back in 2012, and columnist from Pakistan. Welcome to the Inside, sir. Thank you very much. Well, as the Central Secretary General of the Palestine Foundation at Pakistan, please tell us more about this foundation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, the Palestine Foundation of Pakistan, which is formed by the students of University of Karachi, as I was the student in 2008, uh, in May 15, we formed in, from uh, the Pakistani city in Karachi uh, because uh, we believe the ideology of uh, founder father of Pakistan, uh, late Qadi Adam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, mm -hmm. who said before the partition of uh, subcontinent, who, who always raised this issue regarding the Palestinian people, regarding the Palestine issue, who always uh, raised this issue and uh, aware to people, especially Muslims in subcontinent, before the partition, uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah Rahmatullah Alai said, uh, the Zionists will never tolerate uh, capturing the Palestinian land. They will come to the uh, any other uh, Muslim lands and they will capture all the Muslim land, even through their divide and rule policies. Yes, through their divide. And rule. So, uh, we as a Pakistani nation, as a Pakistani, we believe on the ideology of uh, founder father, Qadi Adam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and so that we decided that to uh, start this work in Pakistan, uh, especially on that time in 2008. You remember that uh, in Gaza. Israel launched the first war. The in, cast -led operation. In, yes, in Gaza. So uh, th this was a very uh, horrible for us. We, we, we were receiving uh, several news, several pictures and everything, but it was very painful for us. Mm -hmm. uh, our brothers in uh, Palestine, they, are, you know, they were killing by the Zionist regime and we are in Pakistan, nothing to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of the students uh, decided to create awareness about the issue of Gaza. And then we started from the pictorial exhibition in Karachi. Mm -hmm. And later, 
we spread this issue in uh, Islamabad, Lahore. How do you spread uh, the Palestinian cause and uh, yes, the issues uh, about the Palestinian struggle and agonies? We, we went to the uh, politicians, mm -hmm. uh, civil society, students and other uh, kind of these people. We went them and we, we said them and we, we tell them about the history of Palestine uh, till now and uh, till from 1948. Mm -hmm. How the regime occupied the Palestine, how, uh, yani they, how they expel, expel uh, Palestinian you know, on the day of Nakba and mm -hmm. we create uh, so, so many Awareness. relations with the politicians, with famous mm -hmm. people, uh, column, columnists, research scholars, mm -hmm. students and we create uh, two bodies, one uh, guardian council and mm -hmm. the second is a working committee. Working committee has all the student parties in Pakistan, those are working in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Those all are the members of Palestine Foundation of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And same like uh, members of National Assembly, member parliament, mm -hmm. senators and other famous people and most, most important persons from Pakistan. We uh, uh, gather to, to, to all of them. Mm -hmm. and make a committee and then we started our work uh, as in organized way and alhamdulillah we we are now uh, working in karachi in islamabad in lahore mm -hmm. in quetta hyderabad uh, and the other cities of pakistan multan major especially. cities of yes pakistan. major cities of pakistan do you operate only inside Pakistan or do you liaise for example do you cooperate and coordinate your efforts with other international uh, NGOs foundations of course yes uh, first we were started in Pakistan in 2010 we connected with some uh, some other NGOs mm -hmm. uh, and we found we formed uh, a, an international NGO uh, uh, name namely Asian People Solidarity for Palestine. Mm -hmm. There were uh, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Indonesia, India, Malaysia, and the other Asian countries were present. And we formed a, uh, Asian People Solidarity. And mm -hmm. later in 2011, mm -hmm. we arranged, we, 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 we uh, organized Asian caravan to uh, Gaza. Mm -hmm. uh, caravan to Caravan to by Plaza. land caravan, and, mm -hmm. uh, country by country from uh, that was the start from India, mm -hmm. they came to Pakistan. Same Indonesian, Malaysian, Filipinians, they came to Pakistan by air. And we went to Iran, then uh, Turkey, Syria, Egypt, and then Gaza, we reached in uh, Gaza in 2011. After this, we, we organized Global March to Jerusalem in 2012, uh, 38th of March, in the border of Palestinian borders in mm -hmm. Lebanon. Uh, same thing like Asian caravan uh, from India to Pakistan, from Malaysia, Philippines, Jean, Japan and other countries, they came to Pakistan. We, we welcomed them warmly there in, in Pakistan, mm -hmm. arranged several programs and then we went to Iran, Turkey, Syria and then we reached here in Lebanon on the 29th of March in 2012 and the 30th March we went to the borders to Palestine Right. Uh, Marun Arras and other places and we did, did protest. What other activities are you working on now, uh, Sabr? In Pakistan, our m mission and aim is that to create more awareness uh, regarding this issue, to alive the issue of Palestine among the Pakistani nation. Mm -hmm. It is a very important thing. Uh, so that we uh, continue our struggle and we, we, we are organizing from last eight years different kinds of programs uh, for example a uh, pictorial exhibition uh, which we uh, show the pictures and the photos of palestinian nations they are struggling in palestine mm -hmm. uh, also we show the pictures and portraits uh, operation and uh, zionist uh, operation in uh, on, on the palestinian people Mm -hmm. Like this, two people came and watched the pictures uh, to right, aware. Right, and yes. interact with that. Yes, our media, especially in Pakistan, maybe in India and everywhere, we have no uh, any free media mm -hmm. to raise the issue, to spread the awareness and to, uh, to show the reality what is happening in Palestine, especially now in current situation, uh, now the intifada has been begun, but media is keeping silence, you know, keeping criminal silence, not only silence, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. criminal silence. 
and the the other side some media channels uh, like uh, your al mayadeen mm -hmm. which is uh, raising the issue of the oppressed people of palestine uh, always i watching the tv any news and other things about regarding the intifada al aqsa mm -hmm. unfortunately some arab regimes and some uh, servant of united states and his and zionist regime israel they are banned on them what problems so, have you faced finally uh, to ask you Sabr, what problems have you faced uh, while working for the Palestinian cause inside Pakistan yes as you know uh, I told you as before we are the victim of terrorism since last 30 years mm -hmm. and we have uh, given 70,000 martyrs Pakistani martyrs we have facing these kinds of problems especially if you go to work for a Palestinian issue uh, Zionist regime and the imperialist countries, powers, especially U.S., never tolerate mm -hmm. uh, you work for Palestinian cause and you, you create awareness and other things. So, I give you an example and you will, you, uh, I'm sure you will understand the issue and our problems. Our two brothers, one uh, Mr. Aftab Haider Jafri and the other uh, Sayyid Adil. The both of our brothers, those are working with us in the Palestine Foundation Pakistan in Karachi, the both were killed by the target killing, mm -hmm. especially in targeted killing. Mm -hmm. So these kind of problems, we have life threats, we have other problems. I don't say you, I have financial problem, I have other, no. We have well, of course, a lot of problems, but of the uh, m most important, Yanni, the right, most top Sabir. problem is life threat. Of course, Sabir, we all know that the path towards freedom and liberty is very thorny, but we have to keep going. Sabir Abu Maryam, uh, Secretary General of the Palestine Foundation of Pakistan, many thanks indeed for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. most Thank welcome, you. sir. Fazil Qasir wa Naoud, Latato Biden. جوشوا براون عضو ائتلاف اوقف الحرب في جلاسكو سكوتلندا يصف عمل ائتلاف اوقف الحرب في محاوله للتصدي او لايجاد طرق واساليب لوقف تفاقم الحرب في هذا المكان او ذاك ولا سيما عندما يكون هناك انتهاك لسياده الدول I should probably clarify by saying that the war to which stop the war coalition refers is the so-called war on terror of George Bush and Tony Blair which is being perpetuated by Barack Obama and David Cameron and so forth, um, which has actually uh, managed to make the world a more dangerous place, mm -hmm. which has actually um, created more wars, more occupations, more deaths, more injuries, um, and a greater terror threat around the world. And the fragmentation of various areas across uh, the Arab region. Absolutely. So um, this this so-called war on terror is something that we've been focusing on since the foundation of Stop the War Coalition in 2001. So for 14 years now, you know, um, building up the coalition um, across Britain, across Europe and around the world in activities um, to highlight the negative impact that Western intervention has had historically and to campaign against further Western interventions. Um, also campaigning against Islamophobia the sort of racism and backlash um, mm -hmm. that this so-called war on terror has created, the demonization of Muslims and the um, targeting of Muslims in immigration, border controls and domestically. Mm -hmm. Also the associated um, reduction of civil liberties that we've seen not just in Britain but around the world with the introduction of new laws like in America the Patriot Act and so forth. Mm -hmm. Additional um, powers for the government to spy on people, um, to sort of racially profile or profile. This is what's going to take place actually in France. Yes, mm -hmm. there is an extreme... They are pushing forward towards such kind of amendment of the constitution and trying to uh, a kind of a sense of a Patriot Act but in France. Yes, it, it's a very worrying prospect um, because demonizing people, uh, dividing people, uh, targeting people is not a way to bring about peace and unity. Mm -hmm. You have to um, trust people to come together rather than uh, criminalizing activities that are um, against government foreign policy which is uh, creating war uh, and 
um, problems around the world. What are your activities in this sense and how do you coordinate your efforts internationally? Um, well, the efforts of Stop the War Coalition um, manifest in many ways. We have a lot of um, public meetings where we try to educate people around the issues at hand as they evolve. Um, we have annual conferences um, where people come together and share their experiences, what's working well, um, how can we generalize that, how do we respond to new developments um, like the situation in France for example, um, how can we collaborate uh, internationally. Um, and also having demonstrations, doing lobbying, um, in the run-up to the recent vote uh, in the Westminster Parliament, um, David Cameron you know, put forward a question, uh, should the UK join uh, the bombing of Syria? And he got the consent. He did. Um, While, you know, 70% of the Scottish people, they don't want any airstrikes. Yes. You know, they don't want the people of the UK taking part in any airstrikes against Syria. Yes, I, I think the figure was around 74% of, of people, of the mm -hmm. population in Scotland, and 96% of our MPs, mm -hmm. our members of the Westminster Parliament, voted against the bombing. Mm -hmm. And yet, the jets that were sent within less than uh, five hours were sent from Lossiemouth RAF base in Scotland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Quite, quite a um, betrayal of our interests. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, actually, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, uh, in a recent interview with the Sunday Times, in which he said Britain and France have neither the will nor the vision on how to defeat terrorism and that airstrikes against ISIS will yield no results but will rather be illegal and harmful in that they will help in spreading terrorism. How do you read this? I do believe that uh, bombing is terrorism, whether that bombing is happening on the ground between factions or if it's happening from the air mm -hmm. from uh, state-sponsored fighter jets. So bombing uh, has a dual negative purpose in that it creates more death and destruction on the ground and it also increases the likelihood that there would be some sort of backlash against the nations involved in creating that damage. So mm -hmm. we believe that bombing has never uh, created movement towards peace. Mm -hmm. I mean, a classic example is Libya. The, the state of affairs in Libya right now is absolute chaos. It's an extraordinarily dangerous place for people to try to live their lives mm -hmm. and it's one of the major um, ports of departure for refugees fleeing across the Mediterranean to Europe and this is because Western powers decided to drop bombs uh, on Libya and invest no thought or effort in reconstruction or in infrastructure or in stability because that's not their interest. They're interested mm -hmm. in selling the weapons um, flexing their power and leaving a mess behind. Mm -hmm. and that mess is human beings' lives that's uh, being lost. Right, and the moment the UK announced that it's going to join the coalition in the bombing of ISIS yes. in Iraq and Syria, arms manufacturers talk soar after this decision. What does it mean? It's a perfect example of the problem of the arms industry's influence in foreign policy. Mm -hmm. There's a revolving door basically between elected politicians and the top uh, board of directors of most of these arms industries. If a politician uh, decides or is unelected uh, from their career in politics, they can be welcomed into the board of directors of many of these major um, global military companies because they have the contacts of the people who start wars mm -hmm. and those are the people to whom arms are being sold. Right. It's quite uh, a distortion of democracy, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, sadly, uh, the war will spawn more Islamophobia as the warmongers troll the gutter for support in the sense you have organized, you have co-sponsored the Islamophobia Conference 2015, which is the changing phase of racism held at the city of Edinburgh Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. Uh, what were the prospects of such kind of a conference now? Well, um, it's important to evaluate the situation, um, to raise awareness about the fact that, you know, since Paris has been a massive increase in Islamophobic attacks, um, and the, the attacks are, are based on a combination of fear and ignorance, um, mm -hmm. and racism, obviously. Um, and primarily what, what we are saying is that um, we need to educate people 
as to the situations um, that are happening in the world, the politics of these situations, and to bring people together um, to stand up against the, the racism and the scapegoating of Muslims, um, and to show how that uh, is actually being actively cultivated um, by Western governments as a justification for the wars that they've been perpetuating throughout the Middle East and North mm -hmm. Africa. So once we make the connection, most people uh, become much more um, resistant to those uh, sort of negative connotations towards Muslims. And that's a big part so, of it. Yeah, since you come from Scotland, uh, yeah. Josh, what is the status of the Muslim community in Scotland recently, uh, for example? Well, the Muslim community has always played an active part in Stop the War Coalition, um, mm -hmm. has played an active part in um, charity and fundraising for um, causes like Palestine, for causes like the refugee crisis and so forth. So they've always been an active part of civic society. Um, recently, after the Paris attacks, there's been a huge upsurge in Islamophobic attacks, which is very worrying for us. Um, we don't want that to become How do you deal the new with norm. That? Well, we we reach out and offer solidarity. Um, go and visit the mosques and speak to the imams and speak to the um, people there and remind them that they have our up 100% solidarity. Go to the universities and speak to the Muslim student associations. Speak to um, the friends and family and communities of victims of Islamophobic attacks, just to allow them to know that there is a community of non-Muslims active in Scotland who want to see um, our communities safe and united. Mm -hmm. And through that kind of positive outreach, through that being proactive and offering a hand of unity, it, it, it helps a little bit to, to show people that they're not alone. We don't want the Muslim community to become isolated from the non-Muslim community. I mean, that's essentially the goal of both um, terror organizations like Daesh and also the goal of uh, right-wing politicians like David Cameron mm -hmm. trying to divide those communities is what they're trying to accomplish and we have to work actively and um, not to let that happen and to maintain um, all the positive collaborations that we've developed over the past decades. Right, uh, Josh Brown, a member of the Stop the War Coalition from Scotland. Many thanks indeed for joining us. Thank you very much. You're most welcome, sir. إذا لقاء جديد في الأسبوع المقبل مع ضيف جديد وقضية جديدة ودائما من الداخل. للمزيد من التواصل بريدنا the inside at almayadin.net وصفحتنا على الفيسبوك من الداخل من كل فريق عمل من الداخل من كل الميادين. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله.